Hey guys, Matty Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping. Another big off grid setup coming. Stick around for this one, it is huge. Welcome guys to another giant off-grid setup from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping. My name's Matt. Check this out. So <laughs> it's huge this one. This has over 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage for this. These are the custom-made, handmade Powerpool Scouts from Powerpool Australia. Thanks mate. Doing a great job still. This off-grid setup allows these guys in this Malibu to at the touch of a button, run all of their mains powered devices. That includes the microwave, the air conditioning for those really hot days, all of the factory outlets next to the bed for charging phones, laptops, Dyson vacuum cleaners, uh, the washing machine, induction cooking, toasters, kettles, coffee machines, the list goes on. All of your household devices that you have, you can run anywhere, anytime on the side of the road, all at the touch of a button. A completely monitored, professional system right here. This is all the Victron fruit in this, so this has a massive, massive amount of charge rate coming in, which we're gonna get into right now. What we have is the three 280 amp hour scouts, so there's over 10 kilowatt hours of storage here. They're all set up in parallel here into the Victron Multi 12 3120. So what that is, that's a inverter and charger, all in built, all in one, and when these guys plug in a mains power or a generator, this has the ability to pump in 120 amps into these batteries to fast charge them back up the spec so they can head back out in their next adventure. So that's your mains charging system there. The solar on this is a monstrous 1200 watts. And we've done a little bit different to avoid the shading issues because there's an antenna here and um, the air conditioner's kind of pushed up against the panels. We've done two 200 watt panels on the driver's side, another two on the passenger side, and then we've gone for four 100 watt modules, two up the front, and then another third one kind of center here and the other one at the back. We've split the system to keep a 40 volt open circuit on each array, and we're running them into three Victron smart solar controllers here, as you can see, all labeled. So we've got the 130, the 130, and another 130 taking care of each of those 400 watt strings. So 400, 400, and 400, all networked together, talking to the shunt, talking to each other for synchronized charging, and the combined charge rate is just perfectly balanced, and it's all shown up on the servo on the Touch 50, which we'll get into soon. So that's the solar, guys, 1,200 watts. Um, I was doing some testing yesterday afternoon. I think it was like 3-ish, 3.30. Uh, the sun was on an angle over that way, which would mean the front panels were facing that way, and I was getting over 1,000 watts. So really happy to get that in 30-plus degree heat. Um, they are working really efficiently, happy days. Today will be an even better test because I've got the solar system up and running now. We're gonna do a full day test, so I'll be able to see a full yield over this, and this should see some good yield over today's uh, sunlight hours, so we'll see what that does. Now, down here is the Servo GX. That has a temperature sensor on it as well uh, for this whole area, so we're able to monitor the temperature in here. Um, to make sure that things are all running in spec, which they will because we've absolutely vented the size out of this. The back side of the inverter, we take the hat off. Um, on each solar controller, there's a vent behind it um, and they're mounted vertically like that. So the heat dissipation on this is gonna be quite well um, balanced. Uh, all of the MIDI fuses, as you can see, taking care of the loads. Um, so at the rear here, DC charger, solar left hand, solar right hand, and solar front. 
Each of those MIDI fuses is taking care of each of these here. The DC charger obviously here being the Red Arc. 50 amp version now, you guys know why I'm, that's my go-to because the 50 amp Red Arc is a 50 amp charger. It'll pump in power. It's also got the solar input on it as well, which old mates, uh, we've done on this because old mates got a good fold out panel that they can run into this and plug it in and get extra charge if they want to on top of the 1200 watts. Uh, and also remember guys, that 50 that's going to be pumping in from the vehicle while they're driving or running your engine, the sol it doesn't shut the solar down on the roof. These, these three solar controllers will continue to work. What does that mean? Well, if it's, I don't know, 10 o'clock and you know, I'm putting in nearly 600 watts now, and it's just past nine. So that's an example. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I'm, I've hitched up. I'm at 50% state of charge. You're guaranteed that 50 is going to come in when that engine's running. Well, what about all the solar? Use it. You can with this system. So the solar, that 600 watts is going to be coming in to charge that. So that means 50 amps will be coming in from the vehicle, plus up to 90 amps can come in from the solar guys. 90. These are big numbers. So over well over 120, 130 amps will fly into this battery just from running the engine, just from the sun. No generators, not plugging into mains. So the charge rate from this here combined has the potential to exceed the maximum charge rate of this inverter charger from mains. That's crazy, hey? And that's the thing about lithium, you quality lithium. You can actually charge them pretty much one for one. You feed it an amp, it'll take it. They love to be charged at warp speed and then shut off and stored. That's how they are. They'll, they'll accept every amperage you give it um, within their parameters of each battery. This, Paul recommends 60 per battery. So that would mean 60, 60, and 60. That, the normal discharge, uh, sorry, the normal charging rate for these batteries as recommended by Paul would be 180. You know, that obviously you can charge a lot less than that, more than that if you want to do, but you'll exceed it, not for too long. But this, this won't get anywhere near that. So we set this system up to work at about, about 140 to 150 amp max at any given time. And that's way more than you could ever imagine and ever ever need into these batteries to get them up full. So in amp hours, that's about 840 amp hours, guys. So well over 10 kilowatt hours of storage there. Um, like I said, all the MIDI fuses here, all of the batteries that were in this, the original ones were a couple of full rivers. So that's like, you know, 75, nearly almost 80 kilos of batteries down chassis mounted on this obviously they're coming out. So that 80 kilos will come off of this system um, because this system here has added about 120. So really these guys are only up about 40 by the time they remove those batteries outside, which is really good to add only 40 kilos to this system um, once they're removed with the amount of energy that this can do is just crazy. So very happy to be able to do it. Um, back down here, so all of the relocation from the circuits that were outside are now inside and labeled. So you got fridge, uh, Truma gas heater, your 12 volt main, which is the original BM Pro up the top there, which we'll get into in a second. Then you've got radio memory in the breakaway. So those circuits are relocated inside, all fused much better than what it was. This had those crappy inline blade fuses, which had the yellow um, terminals. Actually, I'll go get them. So that, that's what they are, all right? It's pretty common. If you open your batteries outside, guys, with your chassis mount batteries and check them out, there's a little bit of tape over, but you can see that. So it's not making contact anymore. Now, even the earth point on this, horrible, but that's, that there just literally fell out of that. And it's, it's not even, the, the crimping has even missed it. See it? So that just fell out. So when I was undoing the tape outside, that was like that, just pushed in with tape around it, you know, wrapped around it. Then as, as we've undone the tape, you've just gone, it's fallen out so and funny enough that was the compressor fridge because it has the bushman's in it but that that's the issue we find see so stuff like that so we, um, our advantage is when we do the relocation from outside to inside um, we use midi fuses so your midi fuses has that proper contact area where it just there's no heat accumulation and you can actually get the right right size lug on it to actually work because this realistically that's like they call it six mil auto, but it's actually, it's only about four mil cable square. I think it's 4.8 to be exact. But either way, when you run eight BS like that into that, which is what that was, as you can see, that's on there, only just. 
The problem is, is this essentially becomes the bottleneck. Yes, I know it's only short, but you guys might be aware and might have even seen it. And funny enough, this one's starting to do it. It's starting to melt. That's a 30 amp fuse. It's it's all about the contact area in here. That's like that's like female spade terminals, and that's like a, a male spade. Now, the point of contact. See the point of contact. So this one here is quite loose to put in. All right. And because it's loose, I know that it's going to create heat if you start pushing big current through it. The problem is, is it's a bottleneck, okay? So, and as you guys know, that, that's, what, that's the job of your fuse. Your job needs to be the weakest link in the line. So when it does go over the current rating, it'll pop before the cable gets hot and obviously goes on fire. That's why we have fuses really close to the battery. That way, if there's a short, in this case from that terminal, if there's a short from this point to the chassis, this fuse will pop, obviously be hit between here isn't protected. If you were to short this out here, this being the positive, between that point and that will, that will fuse out, that will get hot and melt. But that's why we have fuses really close to the battery. And when you see setups that we do, um, or any of the professionals that do it, you will see the fuse as close as practically possible to the positive terminal. That way, if the battery gets dis dislodged or touch wood, if there's a rollover or whatever, um, it'll flip. Um, same with the car engine, you, you know, you'll see the fuse box right next to the battery positive. The idea of it is if there's a short, that whole fuse box pretty much just goes pop and it protects from that point backwards. That is common with any any professional setup. That's when it's done right, and that, that's right in that case, but the difference here is you've got a, a C-Tech um, or a BM Pro or a projector management system, it doesn't matter the brand, you've got a battery charger, solar controller and DC charger up in a cupboard running down the wall through 8BS cable and then getting bottlenecked by one of these. Now, they're just cheap. That's why they put them on. They work. But over time, you'll notice if these flog out, right, they'll, they'll start to get bad. They'll get hot. And these will melt in place. It's well documented. I see it all the time. So for you guys that have batteries outside that are not doing a big, like, you know, off-grid job like this, do yourself a favor. Cut these off. Strip that back. Put, that, put a really good quality lug on it, right? Not the yellow one. A good quality lug. Put a MIDI fuse on it and then do it all properly. Do it to all of your circuits. You know, MIDI fuses, they've got size all the way from 20 right up. So I've got a bit of a rule. 30 amps to about 80 is MIDI for us. Below 30, I'm happy to use these, all right, because I do them right and I actually get good quality ones. So well below 30, I'm talking maybe 20. I don't even like really putting more than 25 through these. I, I believe that's too much, um, you know, which is why we try to stick with the MIDI fuses for those applications, which is what we've done here. So nice little tech talk for you guys on that one. Just to recap, guys, 10 kilowatt hours of storage, 840 amp hours of lithium here, paralleled into the Victron Multi Plus 12, 3000, 120 amp mains charger and inverter, running on all of the factory outlets completely seamlessly. These guys have the ability to run their microwave, their air conditioner, induction cooker, toasters, kettles, charging laptops, charging cordless drills, their washing machine, any mains powered device that you run at home, this has the potential to run it. 1200 watts of solar massive amount of solar coming through on the roof of this three victron smart solar controllers all networked together we've gone from red arc 50 amp dc to dc charger with a side mounted anderson plug so they can plug a portable panel in as well to supplement the amount on the roof should they want a fast charge 50 amps will come in from the vehicle on this system as well as the roof solar at the same time so potential charge rate on this is well above 130 any day of the week all monitored easily seen up on the touch 50 at eye level at any given time this can be remotely monitored remotely controlled and remotely updated should these guys have any firmware updates available there we go guys massive off-grid setup hopefully that's some good information for you guys out there and if you're after a setup like this feel free to check out the comments below i'll put some links in the description there follow through from there hit us up on facebook like and subscribe to this uh, we do these videos for customers for a rundown. Uh, we're not in it to, um, you know, we, we just like to spread the word out there to show people what we're doing because rather than say it over the phone, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do that. You guys get to actually see what you could possibly have and what, what runs from it. So let's do that. Let's get into the rundown. I'm going to get up there. I'm going to smash this air conditioner on. It's starting to warm up quite well here in Adelaide now. She's going to be about 35 here today. I'm putting in about 600 watts of solar at the moment. We'll put this Houghton Bel Air on, it's a 3400. 
Um, so I know it's going to be a, it's a roof clunker, so it's going to clunk in, clunk out, which we should be able to pick up. We'll even get the fold out going here because we are free camping. So we'll try and get all charge sources um, jammed into this battery to see what this potential is um, in, a, in a real world situation on a hot day. Cool bananas. So up on the touch screen now with this off-grid setup, with 10 kilowatt hours of storage, uh, because I've got such a large lithium battery bank, that means they got more storage. <laughs> well, look, I try to explain batteries um, and solar and stuff like that in simple terms. Like I like using the water tank analogy and that's um, because a water tank can hold X amount of water and the roof of a house can, can capture X amount of water. So if you were to think of it like that for solar and batteries, it makes sense for most people. Um, you know, work into the efficiencies later on. But generally speaking, the more water tanks you've got, the longer it's going to last when it doesn't rain. And that bears true with a system like this. You know, if you've got 10 kilowatt hours or 840 amp hours of lithium compared to someone with uh, 280 amp hours of lithium or three and a half kilowatt hours thereabouts, well, this one's going to last longer when the sun's not shining. And that's all it is. That's when you've got a system of this size and this caliber, you just expand your storage capacity. Now with 1200 watts of solar on a roof, I know that's a lot of charge rate coming in, but there are people out there with a lot more than that. There are people out there with a lot less. And what that means is, it just means they're getting less charge or more charge. It's as simple as that. The old rule of you need one panel for one battery, I'm not even sure where that came from. Um, I think, because AGMs have a different internal resistance, uh, lead acid battery has a high internal resistance. So, you know, it would push back on a lot. So you'd have to have a bit more power to come in. But the rules are, are simple. You, with lithium, you feed it an amp, it generally takes that amp. It's pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. So if you've got 500 watts of solar and, you know, 1,200 amp hours of lithium, and you've still got 500 watts of solar and 1,200 amp hours of lithium, you're still going to charge it. It's only going to bring in what it can. But if you've got 1,000 watts of solar, it's obviously going to bring in twice the amount. If you've got 1,500 watts, three times. It's all relevant, and that's why I keep saying to people, with solar, these rules are so simple. You can never have too much fact you're only going to charge really quick you charge regulators take care of the regulation that's what a regulator does it regulates the charge coming to the battery it senses when the battery's full it shuts down and goes to storage mode and that's what happens if you've got 2,000 3,000 4,000 watts of solar it's just going to fly in at warp speed you know regulate the charge rate and then fill your batteries up that's the idea of it and then as you start to turn on loads if you exceed that amount of solar coming in well you're going to be using battery capacity but if you don't exceed it it, the solar is essentially going to be running the devices. It's going to skim over the top of the batteries and go straight to the loads. And that's why I love using the Victron stuff because you can see it at any given time, all on the touchscreen right here. So I want to get into it. I want to see my, what my three arrays are doing. So it's only 9.30 in the morning. Time's right there. Um, right hand side, left hand side and front. All 400 watt arrays on three solar controllers. Pretty, pretty close. I would say the front's putting more because they're on a slight angle and the sun is coming up from that direction. Right? So, sorry, the sun is up from that direction and the front of this fan is slightly angled as you can see. So there's 200 watts up here and that's why that front is putting in slightly more. But not a, not a crazy amount more. And the other arrays, so the left hand and right hand, they're the 200 watt modules. Um, pretty even, I would say and they are putting in the numbers right there. Now all of that combined equals 633, right in front of you. So your combination is always here. So it's 9.30 in the morning and look at this number. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now this has the roof clunker. <laughs> These are, are beasts. These Houghtons, um, Horton, Houghton, however you want to pronounce it, Belairs, are great air conditioners, but being a roof clunker, <laughs> their continual running usage is quite high. Um, I think this is, I'm going to guess around the 950 mark. Um, it might start out a bit less, but as it, as it starts to um, run on, I think we'll probably see close to a thousand maybe. So the running energy of this one is going to be a lot more than say, a uh, Trooper Adventure, uh, Dometic, Ibis 4 or a Dometic Harrier Plus or a Harry Light. Those type of air conditioners are my go-to. As you guys know, they are an inverter style air conditioner. So they ramp up slowly. 
and they ramp down. You can control them better. You can put it on dehumidifier to ramp it down. You can put it on night mode. You got more, more control over the compressor's speed. These ones, they are clunking on, clunking off, and you know, they shake the roof, some of them. Uh, this one actually doesn't do too bad, but um, you know, and that brings me to my next one, the inverter. If you've got a low frequency inverter like the Victron is, with a big single transformer in it, that'll take the inductive load. So the big starter, if you hear that, that kind of buzz, that's the cut in. If we had a high frequency inverter, I actually don't think it would run this too well. Um, the big smashing on and smashing off of the load would probably diminish its life. Um, I mean, you know, hit me up. If you guys have got like an Enerdrive inverter, 2600 with a Houghton, let me know. Curious to know what she uh, sounds like on startup because the high frequency inverters are completely, uh, completely different kettle of fish compared to a low frequency, like the big Victron inverter. So hit us up, curious to know. So we'll get this going. We'll go 16 and full fan. Yep, so we go 16 and full fan. Let's see what she clunks in at. Let's see if we can get this. It's actually not bad. I thought it'd be a lot louder than that, the clunking in, the clunking out. I really didn't hear it. But we had 40 coming in from the solar. Um, take note, that's obviously changed now because of this load. This loads is so, these loads are so great. So let's, let's do that. Let's see what this is pulling. So we click it. We can go into the multi quite right easily right here. So if you want to see what the multi plus is pulling, just, just the AC loads alone, so it's pulling nearly 80 amps. So that's just running the um, the AC load. So that 80, go back to pages. That's why we're seeing that number here. All right, so that 40, 45 before that we saw is now completely offset. And you can see the little blue dots that have changed direction now. And you can see where it's going. So it's about right. This is, you know, the 950 to 1000 watt mark running. But you've got to remember something, guys. This isn't going to run at that wattage for the whole hour. All right, so if you did some maths right now, call that 1000. If I've got 10 kilowatt hours, 10,000 watt hours, and I'm pulling a thousand, it's only gonna last for 10 hours until these batteries are dead flat. The solar will offset that, all right? Now I'm putting in over half a kilowatt, so you could double that right now, but this will turn off. Now I've set it for 16, so it's going to get this quite cold. You're probably not gonna do that in the real world. Most people run their air conditioners at around 21, 22. I know I do, it's, it's too cold. You get that real cold wind and then you go outside, you're even hotter. So most people, I find, will set their air conditioners to around 21, 22, maybe even 23. What that means is your air conditioner is going to run more efficiently. And you guys out there probably with off-grid setups already know that. Um, you'll find that sort of happy medium where your air conditioner is either always running flat out or if it's cutting in and cutting out at a softer speed um, at a lower rate, maybe one or two degrees between 21 and 23. And you'll find that out as you start to use the van, just like these guys will do. They'll, they'll put it on 21, that it might smash the battery, but they'll put it on 22 or 23, and it's much more lenient. They've just found that happy medium. And this is a fully insulated van, so it should be pretty, pretty good at holding, uh, holding the temperature down for them. So, pretty happy with that, guys, running the air conditioner all off grid. Um, microwave. Why not? Let's flip you around. So microwave running and the Houghton full song. So the air conditioner is pulling about a thousand or 950 or something and then the microwave on top of that right now. Also done a couple of Ruby tags for these guys. So obviously measuring temperature in there and the fridge and the freezer in here as well. So they're those uh, little Bluetooth um, temperature sensors that we run and obviously you can see everything at any given time in here. So we've got Battery temperature, fridge temperature, freezer temperature, and then everything else is all there, all seen on this. Now this is on the VRM portal, so I have remote access to this. The customer has remote access to this, so if he wants to see anything that's going on with his van at any given time, all he has to do is flip open his smartphone, log on, and check what's happening. Up here we have the original system kept in situ for our mate. I think he's gonna sell this. This has been completely disabled. That'll come straight off. This here is no longer used as a charger. As you can see, mains is not plugged in anymore, obviously because that would be running from the inverter, which the inverter has a charger in. This isn't required, which is why we do this. 
the uh, mains lead for this completely gets tucked away with absolute zero potential for it to be plugged in ever again. But if these guys sell their van and revert this back to factory, it's a simple pull out and plug it back in, reinstate the batteries outside and you are done. So this here, now no more charge rates go through it. So no more solar, obviously. No more auxiliary in, that's from the vehicle's Anderson plug. That is now taken care of by the Red Arc 50. So this basically is a remotely switched, which is here, fuse box, that's it. These two wires go to the batteries. So this draws from the 10 kilowatt hour battery system at 12 volt, continues to run seamlessly and flawlessly. Now, as you guys are aware, you may not be aware, I give people the option when they have a swift hot water service like these guys to have their electric element run from the inverter. The reason we do it is because it is only a thousand watt element and with people that have over a kilowatt of solar and with a monster battery system, we offer it as an option. And these guys have opted for it because obviously they leave this in the off position and they always run gas. But I'm gonna show you guys something, what you're able to do. So if you wanna superheat your water from batteries and solar because your battery's say at 100% and you're not using your energy during the day, well, here's what you do. You turn your gas off, so you save your gas and you put your, you put your hot water on and that'll add about a thousand watts to that. There it is. So right, right now we are running the hot water from batteries and solar. You gotta remember the air conditioner's running at the same time. The situation you would do this in is if you wanted to superheat the water because you can run both at the same time or heat your water up while you're driving in the sun because you've got enough energy coming in from the vehicle right and the sun to keep up with this even if not even if you only pull a few amps out of the batteries well you got hot water and then when you get to your free camp you simply turn it off and you put gas back on very easy and then that load will disappear and the air conditioner will continue to run like it is right now beautiful it is a it is a backup um, we, and we, like I said, we only offer it for customers that understand the system and know what it means. So look, you shouldn't be leaving this switch on anyway, because if you did leave that on, when you plugged in the mains power and the hot water service um, is dry, or for whatever reasons it's drained, well, that would be like putting a kettle on with no water in it. You'll burn the element out and then you'll be out for service, which is what you don't want. So good little habit to get into guys, leave this off and only put it on when you're on mains power. Well, there you have it, guys. Another off-grid setup for these guys. 1,200 watts of solar, 10 kilowatts of lithium battery storage, all the Victron fruit. These guys are set up for a massive, massive off-grid shindig here. I'm very happy with this setup. We are free camping now. I'm going to do some more tests. But you guys, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Be well.